if you did a study, and they don't really do studies like this, but if you did a study that followed someone, not for 12 weeks or 16 weeks, but for a, a year, year or two years, two years yeah. and you compared people who did just 10, you know, eight to 10 reps, right? Versus people that went through different phases of, de of all of these reps. What you would find is the person that trained for four weeks in a rep range and four weeks in another one, whatever, over time got better, more consistent results in both strength and in muscle. Now, if you just do head to head short study, Yes, some will build a little more muscle, some build a little more stamina, some build a little bit more uh, more strength. But over time, they all contribute, and it's and you always and look anybody who's ever done this knows this. You stay in one thing for six to eight weeks, you switch over, it's like boom, my body's responding again. Oh my god, this is amazing, and that's the beauty. That's the thing you want to take advantage of. All right, everybody, last time I'm going to do this. I'm going to give away another super bundle because we still have that crazy sale that I'm going to really have a meeting with my marketing team and figure out what the hell they were thinking. Anyway, last time I'm going to give away the super bundle. It's the biggest bundle we have. It includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Prime, and MAPS Anywhere. Okay, Five programs for free, but you got to leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, subscribe to this channel, and turn on notifications. And if we pick your comment, you'll get free access to all those programs. All right, so what's the crazy sale I'm talking about? 50% off everything. All MAPS programs, every individual MAPS program right now is 50% off. These are the final hours. The sale ends June 1st. So if you're watching this right when we release it, uh, good job. You're lucky. You can still take advantage of this. Here's what you got to do if you want to get that 50% off. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, click on the MAPS program that you want, and then use the code MD2022. By the way, that code can be used repeatedly. So if you buy one program for 50% off, you want to get another one, use it again. You can get them all. It'll work for every single one. All right, here comes the show. All right, so check this out. All rep ranges build muscle and burn body fat. Now, the key is knowing when to use the rep ranges, how to use the rep ranges, and what they do for your body. But they all work. Coming in with the controversial heat. Yeah. There's, there's My all, way is the highway, Sal. I know. There's always discussion around this. Like, what's the best rep range for, for burning body fat and for building muscle? And um, I, 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 we will get into mm -hmm. the kind of general breakdown um, strength training rep ranges. And I want to say that because, of course, at some point, a rep range can get so high that it no longer is really strength training. It's like just straight endurance training. So we're talking about the strength training rep ranges, which are like, one rep to like 20 reps, maybe a little more. Well, I, doesn't this fit into those avatars of like, I identify as a power lifter. I identify as a bodybuilder. I identify as like an endurance athlete. Yeah. And like, we can almost like completely shuttle them into these rep ranges. And that's the only place they stay. It yeah. does. It all, it's also a great conversation to follow up. Um, you recently addressing the forum and, and how we, how people love to attach themselves to a study. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, and that's how we got to these like rep ranges that like, this is what it's for, right? You know, this rep range to this rep range is for this and for these type of people. Mm -hmm. But the truth is how you open this is that all these rep ranges burn body fat and build muscle and whichever one that you've been doing for a significant amount of time, it starts to lose its value for whatever reason that you are, are doing it. So, and I fell into this trap. Yeah. I remember as a, as a young kid, like, I mean, I, I was all about building muscle. I cared about how I looked. That was what so I was- you did the mass building rep ranges, right? Yeah, it was either mass building or hypertrophy is all. I would never consider high hip because at that time, especially back then, um, there was so much information uh, on uh, like magazines and stuff that were gearing. You know, if you were 15 to 20 rep ranges, that was, that was for girls. Yeah. That was for someone who wanted to tone or lean out. Right. And I was a skinny kid, so with a no desire. Like I would never think to do- the 15 to 20 rep range. That's, that's ridiculous. Like I, I have to put on all this muscle. And so, and this is what all the studies say. The studies are showing that mm -hmm. this rep range builds the most amount of mass or puts on the most amount of muscle. So I would stay in that, not realizing that, uh, my body had gotten so adapted to training in that rep range that the returns I was seeing were, were very minimal. Yeah. All rep ranges build muscle and burn body fat, but they all also become stale at mm -hmm. some point. Um, and they all, and there's some crossover, by the way, we're going to give some, some kind of ranges, but there's, it's not as specific as we're kind of, kind of lay it out. Um, but for the, you know, for the sake of this show, we had to be a bit specific, but they all have value. You just got to know when to use them. And in my opinion, more importantly, understand the mindset going into each rep range 
and how you approach the rep range when you work out because they feel different and they do require a different mindset. You have to have a, a, a bit of a different, the way you go into your workouts different when you train, for example, for three reps than when you train for, let's say, 15 reps. And that makes a big difference. And of course, knowing when to to do one or the other. I think that's such a great point because the first trap we 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 fall into is identifying with a type of group, and this is how they train. There, so therefore, I train this way. So I yes. stay in stay in this rep range, and then I come across some information where somebody educates me a little further on it, and goes like, "You really should move out of that rep range, even if this is your specific goal." And then you do that. But you've done that other rep range and identified with that group of people for so long, whether it be a power lifter, a bodybuilder, an athlete, whatever. And so you train like them still in the new rep range. So there's kind of two things that you yeah, have to figure point. out here. You not, not only do you do you have to figure out like, oh, I don't want to get stuck in this this way of training all the time, even if my goal is specifically to look like a bodybuilder or be a power lifter or be an athlete just because that's what this research says is this is the best area for me to be in. I want to move out of that. But I also need to know that when I move out of that, the to your point, that my mindset needs to change yeah. because the adaptation is different and the focus is different. Everything from the tempo to the intent that I move the weight should shift. And expectations and that how was, it's going to feel. That was hard. you know. So I was trapped first for a really long time in what we were talking about in this like putting size on. Then I finally move into the, you know, higher rep range, but I'm still thinking, you know, lifting the same yeah. way that I would for even uh, rest. I mean, in between, yeah. right. That's yeah. a really hard concept for people that are in, um, you know, more in the endurance mindset, uh, so to speak. And we'd have to kind of talk our way through that a lot of times as coaches and trainers, you know, the value of that, like each one of these acute variables have their own specific value for each one of these rep ranges and, and it needs to be applied appropriately. That's yeah. such a great point. You, what you're saying right now so reminds me of my experience training like at Orange Theory, right? And you that attracts the, you know, uh, short rest periods, high rep ranges, get a sweat on, mm -hmm. make the muscle burn, get the heart rate up, burn a lot of calories. And even when I would when I would get through to those people that were working out in there that listen, it's so important that you guys take rest and you guys strength train in the one to six six rep range because you're so used to doing these 15 to 20 and superset type workouts, you get massive benefits. By, by lifting heavier weight and going lower reps, they would do that, but then they would still do it like a circuit. Like hustle through it. Yeah, so they really weren't, they really weren't lifting closer to their max like they could. They were, mm -hmm. they were lifting a weight that they could rest for 30 seconds. It was like they, tip, they dipped their toe in the water. Yeah, exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they, they at least moved from the, the weight that was so light they could move it 15 to 20 times. Now they just picked a little bit heavier weight yep. that they could do five or eight times but they still were only resting 15 seconds or not at all. And so they weren't actually pushing their bodies the way they needed to, to get the real benefits of that lower rep range. Totally. Now, uh, before we get into it, there's two myths that I think we need to address. One is that looking at an athlete and then looking at the training methodology, that if you train that way, you'll look like that athlete. Now, there's a little mm -hmm. bit of truth to this, right? Bodybuilders train a particular way. And part of the reason why they look the way they do is because of the way they train. Same thing with power lifters and Olympic lifters. But there's also something that we don't consider. When you're looking at the top level of athletes, which is typically what we look at, that they were genetically, you know, born to perform well at that sport. So to give it an easier example, it would be like me looking at Michael Phelps, who's easily the greatest swimmer of all time. He's easy, the most decorated, most winningest swimmer of all time and saying, you know what? If I swim a lot, I'm going to get long arms, short legs, and a flat rib cage because uh, that's, that's what <laughs> swimming does. Yeah. No, he was born that way. Um, and then of course he trained to get really good. So looking at like a power lifter and saying, well, if I train like a power lifter, uh, I'm not going to get that lean. I'm going to get really wide hips, uh, and you know, wide waist. Well, no, not, <laughs> that's not really how it works. Power lifters were kind of built that way naturally. And then of course they built on top of it with their training methodology. The second myth is that there's fat burning rep ranges and, and rep ranges that aren't fat burning. And this is built on the myth of calorie burn during the workout. So they say, okay, if I do 20 reps, I'm going to burn more calories than if I do five reps. Well, for, although that's true, the rep, the, the calorie burn difference is very small. It's not that big of a difference. And really when you're looking at exercise, and I made this argument in many, many other podcasts, especially with strength training, forget about the calories that you burn while you work out. You want to consider the adaptations. And the reason why strength training is such a great long-term fat loss approach is not because it burns a lot of calories, but rather because it helps speed up the metabolism. It teaches your body <coughs> to burn the most calories on its own. So the best, the, the rep range that burns the most body fat is the one that builds the most muscle. 
Bottom line. Doesn't matter what that rep range looks like. Not to mention, if you're somebody who does the the high rep range for the calorie thing, um, maybe in that workout, it may uh, burn a few more calories. But if you always train that way and you never train five to six rep range. Yeah, you're not building the same muscle. And then you go and you train in the, the lower rep range. Uh, I would make the case that, okay, maybe you burn a few more calories by all the extra movement in the higher reps in that workout. But the next 24 to 48 hours the amount of calories that your body is going to need in order to recover and repair the damage that you've done in the low rep range would probably counter the amount of calories. And the muscle that you you build because of the novelty. Right. Absolutely. All right. So the first rep range is going to be the low one. Uh, This is the one to five rep range. You rarely ever see bodybuilders training this because this is a strength training, you know, strength athlete rep range, right? This is like power lifters. Yeah. Olympic lifters like to train in this rep range. Well, I was just going to say that there's there's also a level of risk factor between e- all these uh, rep ranges mm-hmm. in, in terms of like once um, weight is something that our focus is on increasing the weight and lowering the reps, you know, now that demand is a bit more intense on the joints, on the body. And so I could see where a little bit of, um, you know, if you're in a bodybuilder type of mentality where hypertrophy is definitely something you're always seeking, uh, you're going to it's not as appealing because now there's like a lot more demand on the joints, the achiness that, that, that goes with that when, you know, maybe I could do some of these moves in, in a different way. That's yeah. not going to feel the same. Yeah. yeah now, this was me. I didn't, yeah. I didn't lift. You guys know, I don't know if I've ever expressed this on the podcast or not, but you know that I never lifted anything less than five reps yeah. before all of us got together. Yeah. Never even knowing all this stuff, right? That's what's crazy. It's like, I, I knew this, but I was like, so, I, I, I don't identify with a power lifter. I don't care about my max rep. All I care about is how I look. I can manipulate the other rep ranges to continue to build muscle. Mm-hmm. And so I, I avoided it, even knowing what we're talking about. So I had the knowledge now and experience of this, knew it. But even I was sucked into that, like, oh, I, have, I never have a desire to be a power lifter. I never care about what my max is on any of these things. I have enough rep ranges to manipulate between five all the way up to 20 that I could continually to manipulate those enough to have novelty and stimulate the muscle growth. And I did. And I had a lot of success with that. But I tell you, when I, when I f- started to play with the one to five rep range that I never did until I was 30, boy, did so much muscle pack onto my, my body. Yeah. And it blew my mind. It blew my mind at what I was missing out on by not including that into my repertoire. Yeah. Now consider this. If you are an athlete competing in these uh, sports, most of the time that you train will be in these rep ranges. Yeah. That doesn't mean you don't train the other ones because the other ones still have value. But most of the time you'll spend, if you're a power lifter, is going to be in this one to five. Uh, but I will say this. Most people listening to this are not uh, in that category. Most people listening to this podcast want to build muscle, burn body fat, look good, feel good. And they want good, consistent results all the time, not necessarily to compete in one specific sport. So that's kind of who we're talking to. <clears throat> yeah. But mindset is everything. And you, and you, you mentioned the, the kind of joint pain and you got to be careful with heavyweight. A big part of that is mindset. Now, of course, once you get to extreme levels, you get so strong, yeah. then it kind of, you know, you got to be careful. But for most people, the injuries that happen in the one to five rep range is because they have the wrong mindset going into the exercise. Because um, it's different than when you're doing like a set of 15 reps, for example. Mm-hmm. So- the mindset going into, and I just did this today. I haven't lifted heavy in a long time. I'm going into a heavy lifting phase. And I've been training the bodybuilder kind of mentality for so long that it was I, it was wonderful switch of mindset. Like I'm going into the workout and I'm focusing on activating my CNS. Mm-hmm. I'm focusing on uh, like angry intensity or, or really focused intensity with my lift. It's low reps. It's heavy weight. So I have to summon yeah. strength differently. It's heavy on that. Uh, initial first part of the movement. So it's that concentric uh, focused lift where all of your force that you generate initially is what the goal is to really, you know, get in tune with that central nervous system, get put all that demand there and then find a way to, um, you know, not spend so much time on the negative. Yeah. Most importantly, I would say it's this is when you're training the low rep ranges, you're not focusing on mind to muscle connection. You're focusing on the movement. Yeah. If I'm bench pressing for four reps or deadlifting for three reps or overhead pressing for four reps, I'm not thinking chest, shoulders, lats. I'm thinking perfect yeah. my biomechanics, stay tight, and move my body in a way to maximize force generation. I don't care about the muscles that I'm trying to feel 
because it's kind of a waste of time in this low rep range anyway, when the goal is to lift as much weight as possible with, with the safest form uh, possible. Which is different than like having these warm up sets where like you're feeling the muscle. Totally. Okay? So this is really one of those things where setup and focus is at the a higher priority going into the lift. So even taking that extra bit of time uh, to uh, get rid of any loose, you know, part of the body and really start, you know, to, to be able to tighten everything and get everything in perfect alignment yes. uh, beforehand. Yeah. I'm, I'm priming at the same time trying to conserve energy. Yeah. Yes. Right. Cause you want max amount of energy to go. So like to your point with warm up sets, like when you're kind of like in a bodybuilder mindset, you can do like, you do a couple warm up sets with like moderately, yeah. you know, Feel a little bit of a pump. Yeah. A little bit of pump feeling it. Cause you're not, you're not trying to max out. You're not going for one to three reps and you're not worried about it. So you can you can fatigue a little bit, right? Or you mm -hmm. burn, you can you when you're getting ready to go move a max load, you want to conserve as much energy and keep in mind too your tempo changes, right? So when you're when you're moving like a bodybuilder and you're thinking about mind muscle connection, you got that four second negative, yeah. And you're that's where that a lot of that mental focus is happening is that I'm lowering the bar on a bench press. I'm really thinking about my chest resisting the yeah. weight as it comes down. When I'm bench pressing in a like a power phase like this, yeah. I'm I'm just I'm yeah. trying to explode. Get it. Yeah. Even even if you know it's funny, even if you go down slow, because you'll see powerlifters do this too, they'll lower slowly, but they're not thinking chest resists no. the weight. No. They're thinking stay in the groove and stay tight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like stay, stay in, tight, keep rigid. it on track and then get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then explode out of it as, right. as hard as you possibly can. Right. And that's the feel. The feel that you're looking for with this, it's strong, tight, and stable. You want to think of your body mm. as a unit when you're training in this rep range, not individual muscle groups trying to feel, you know, what's going on. Like if I'm doing a squat in this rep range, I am not thinking, feel my quads, feel my glutes, feel my hamstrings. I'm thinking I want to feel as tight yeah. and stable as possible. I want to maximize my biomechanics, make this as safe and explosive and as strong as possible. And then the, the, the <laughs> muscles that I feel is a consequence. It's not a, the, the primary, you know, goal. This is why one of the more challenging still to this day for me is, uh, is actually activating my entire body when bench pressing. Yeah. I trained like a bodybuilder for so many years of my life that it didn't, I didn't need driving force from the ground. It was, I, I wanted my chest to take all of it. I don't want my legs to help me with the bench mm -hmm. press. I wanted my chest to do all the work because that's where I'm going to, that's what I'm trying to build. So when I had to switch over to this, still to this day, I really have to focus on getting myself really tight and driving my legs in the ground. It's not natural for me. You can always tell which way somebody trains all the time based off of things oh, like yeah. that. You'll see, you'll see they'll have a really hard time connecting their legs in an exercise like a like a bench now press. Now you think to someone maybe watching, like, what does the legs have to do with a bench press? It doesn't lift the weight. Okay. So you're not pushing with your legs to lift your back and create some weird terrible form. What you're doing is you're activating your central nervous system. Yeah. You are staying tight to the ground. I like to squeeze the bench with my knees. I tuck yeah. my feet back. Everything stays real tight. And that adds force because it, yeah. it makes your CNS you're, you're fire harder. You're anchoring your body down. So now you don't have any leak in performance as well. Yes. So anytime, if you notice a, a loose part of your body, it's going to shift based off of uh, you know, the, the demand of where the, the bar path is going. Yeah. It's, it's literally, that. it's literally stable. It's just and super tight. stable, tight, rock solid. Yeah. If I'm benching heavy like this, you, you, you nothing's going to move me off that bench. Now, if yeah. I'm, if I'm trying to feel the chest, I mean, you could push me to the side and I might fall off, but when I'm doing it like this, I am tight. I'm glued to the bench and the floor and the barbell. And it's, and again, I don't care what muscles I feel. In fact, I'd rather feel all the muscles yeah. when I'm doing this particular <laughs> Now, uh, I mean, and, and to address Olympic lifting is in this category as well. It's a little bit different because very it's, explosive. It's, it, it's super, super, it's all about the acceleration of the weight. And, and uh, I think there's a misconception because we watch the Olympics and we see a lot of these lifters, like with a lot of weight, you'd probably see power lifters yeah. do, but like for your average person, you're going to have to lighten the load quite substantially to be able to get that kind of velocity and explosive movement. Oh my God. The last thing you want to do as a <clears throat> power, when you're doing this rep range, if you're, especially if you're a competitive power lifter, Olympic lifter is feel the muscles, the individual muscles no. working. If you do an, especially an Olympic lift, you do a, a, a clean or a snatch and you think I got to feel my biceps or my back, 
you are not going to lift the weight very effectively. Or no, it's it's more similar to like someone throwing a baseball. Yes. Yeah. Like, could you imagine throwing a baseball and trying to think of like, oh, I want to, my shoulder and, and my back. Squeeze, you know, this yeah. shoulder. Maybe the worst. Like, like, like five feet. Release, extension. Yeah. 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 No, you, you, it's strong, stable, fire. Everything stays tight. I want to stay. I want to focus and perfect. The, I am not thinking about the muscles. I'm thinking about the movement. Okay, so. What are some of the, the the pros of training this way? Well, um, this is all speculative, but your body, re- when you train in a phase for three to five weeks of this, you feel really strong and solid. It's a very different feel from other rep ranges. I literally feel like my body is made out of granite when I start to train this way. And, it, it's, and bodybuilders will even talk about this because you, you see some bodybuilders, obviously they don't care how much they lift. They care how they look, but you'll even hear, hear bodybuilders say, Training this rep range gives them a granite look to their muscle versus the big bubbly, you know, kind of pumped look that a lot of people. Now, uh, from like an athletic perspective, it it just, it trains the muscle in that fast twitch response type of way. So your reactivity uh, uh, is is much improved uh, by being able to to train uh, with that type of explosive uh, initial movement. Yep. Yeah, this is something that I've talked about on the podcast before. So if you're a kid who, you know, identifies with like similar to like how I felt as a kid where I was skinny. I just wanted to build muscle. Mm. I trained like a bodybuilder and trained hypertrophy all the time. One of the things that I struggle with, it used to drive me crazy and I can't, I don't think I'm alone on this, uh, is I, I, I get all aired up in the gym. The pump. Yeah, the pump. And, and I, I liked the way I looked. And then I would leave. And then within an hour, it would all yeah. deflate. And then I'd feel like I looked like a kid who didn't lift weights. You mm-hmm. know, in the gym, I looked great. I felt great. Walked out. And then I, I would lose that look. That was like for years and years. It wasn't until I started to train like this where I started to build this physique that it didn't get air- aired up as much in the gym because I'm not doing 15, 20 rep ranges. I'm not I'm yeah. not resting for you know short rest periods. I'm getting these long rest periods. I'm lifting really, really heavy. So the pumps weren't as massive. But as I started to put on muscle, my body looked different. It was solid. Yeah. I, I now now what I and what I feel like I look today is like, oh, you you can tell I work out, mm-hmm. even though I didn't just get aired up in the gym. I cannot work out for a week and I still look mm-hmm. like I train and I and I lift weights. Where I didn't feel like that in my twenties. In my twenties, I felt like a kid that had to have just gone to the gym like a couple hours ago for me to have looked like I lifted. It wasn't until I started training this way. And I it's so hard to yeah. There's really no studies. That I know there's there's not there's and, nothing that I can point to to prove my point. Yeah, a lot of anecdote, right? You hear this from a lot of people. Yeah, right. And that's one of the that's one of the that's why we say mindset so important. If your mindset is about getting the pump, you're going to be sorely disappointed with a one to five rep range. I mean, you do five sets of a bench press for three reps, and you might get a little bit of a pump, but it's not going to compare to the pump you get when you do more of a bodybuilding workout. But that doesn't mean you're not building muscle, mm-hmm. and that's why the mindset's so important. So. Some of the cons of training this way are just the lack of pump and the lack of burn. That's another one. A lot of, especially my female clients, Mm -hmm. fall in love with the feeling of the burn. And mainly Mm -hmm. because they were told that the burn is what gives them the fat loss. Yeah. Yeah. And so we would do, you know, a heavy set of five reps or four reps. They'd be like, I don't feel a burn. It's hard. I'm straining, but I don't feel the muscle burn. Is it really working? Yes. So, but that's one of the cons, right? Is that if you fall in love with those feelings, you're not going to get this crazy pump or this crazy burn. You just your reps are too are too low, and you may not be sweating because it's anaerobic. So yeah. it's there's another factor. It's like a lot of the yeah. Am I wasting pre- my time? You know? Yeah, exactly. A lot of the preconceived ideas of what a workout should consist of, right? Uh, that this doesn't really Dude, fit in that. Combine the lack of sweating and the lack of burn with the fact that top level power lifters tend to not be super lean. Yeah, and you can <laughs> now see. Where that the yeah. the, the I don't myth, want to look like that. Yes. Right? So then they avoid this whole way of doing it. So then the myth is, oh, if I train this way, I'm going to get bulky. Or the people, or people will do it for a little while and then they'll bail on it really quick yes. because they're not feeling the same way that they felt from the other workouts. So. Right. But it's a big myth, right? Oh, if I train this way, I'm going to get boxy. I'm going to get bulky. You even see this in powerlifting. Um, excuse me, in bodybuilding uh, circles. Oh, uh, you train this way, your waist is going to get real big and square. <clears throat> No, it just so happens to be that people with big waist tend to squat the most weight. So yeah. that's why you see that. Which is physics, by the way. That's yes. why that happens. It's, it's like, I mean, I know we rail on CrossFit a lot, but we, you know, in their defense, like that's something that I, a critique I've heard. Oh, I don't want to do CrossFit because all the girls have these boxy hips. It's like, no, those girls had boxy hips and that's why they're good at CrossFit. That's yeah, one of the reasons yeah. what made them really yeah, good. It's physics. It gives them better leverage for when they're squatting and deadlifting and yeah. doing these, these Plus movements. Plus having obliques helps to stabilize your spine. Yeah. yeah. Like, let's not, well, uh, look, if you have a small, <laughs> shrink those muscles. If you have narrow hips 
and you build some obliques, you're not going to get a bigger waist. Mm -hmm. What are you going to get? Like a, not even a quarter inch around your waist bigger. You'll have developed obliques and you'll just look way better. Yeah. So I wouldn't, don't worry about the, oh, I'm going to make me bulky or boxy. Not true. This was my favorite rep range to train female clients in because they were the ones that were most likely to neglect this. Yeah. My male clients, every, no, I'd say 25% of them had messed with this rep range. <clears throat> my female clients never trained this rep range because they never thought this was a good fat burning one. It made them yeah, bulky. It was game changer. I'd throw them in this rep range <clears throat> and it was like life changing for them. Well, oh my God, I'm finally building. Oh my God, I'm getting so lean. Wow, look at my butt. Everything's I mean, it's uh, part of why Mind Pump happened. I mean, uh, when you sent over the first program, Maps Anabolic, and I remember reading it, uh, that's exactly where, what I was thinking when I read it. That's so why I put that first. I was like, okay, I know that 70% of my clientele is female. I know that 90% of them rarely ever strength train or never have strength trained before. Like I learned that in my career that that became like the go-to move whenever I get a female client. It was like, I would always put them on a strength face because nine times out of 10, they've never trained that way. And of course it's, it, I want to show them the most results I can possibly to mm -hmm. build value. It's in the myself. best way to train them too. It was novel for them. Right. So that's what would happen. And so I remember when I opened that up, I was just like, oh, this is, this is perfect. This totally. is totally. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the, the popular, what people would consider hypertrophy muscle building rep range. Now, again, there's some carry over here. So we could have broken this up into five different rep ranges, but it'd be silly. So this rep range is six to 12. This is like the bodybuilding rep range. More commonly, you'll hear people refer to as eight to 12. Fine, same thing or whatever. The mindset of this is totally different, okay? The mindset that I was doing when I was doing three reps is not the same as the mindset as when I'm doing, you know, eight reps or 12 reps. With this, I'm looking for smooth intensity, okay? If I get that same rage focus, tighten everything intensity that I do three reps and I do 12 reps with that, I'm going to pass out on the floor. It's not going to be as, as, as effective. With this, I want smooth intensity. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to connect to the muscle. I'm trying to feel my lats. I'm trying to feel my glutes. I'm trying to feel my delts and my pecs when I'm doing a specific exercise. Totally different. Like if you bench press for three reps, you bench press for 12 reps, one it's the movement. The other one is let me feel this muscle working and let me feel this connection. Yeah, this is the uh, time and retention phase. Yes, right. This mm -hmm. is where you you are thinking about the the entire set. You know, if you whether you're moving at six reps or twelve reps, but the entire time I just want to feel it in that muscle group. Yes, all the way from the bottom to the top of the movement, all the way through it. So time and retention, moving slower tempo wise, really resisting the negative and thinking about where you feel it, stuff like that, squeezing at the top. Like this is where all those techniques. I think have a lot. That's another thing that we haven't touched really on too, is there's a lot of like techniques that I think apply to certain rep ranges. Yes. Right yes. You Just like I, we said with the low rep range of like tightening up your legs and your core when you're benching with something like this, you're like, you're focusing on the squeeze. Yeah. You're focusing on the stretch. Yeah. You're focusing on different parts of the rep that make you feel the muscle more. You're right? trying to direct that contraction and, and really connect to where you're feeling uh, that muscle's involvement. And if it's not involved, how can I how can I highlight that a bit more and intensify? In that? fact, it often means you have to go lighter. So with the yeah. other rep range, if you can adjust your technique and your form so you can lift more weight and increase your, your improve your biomechanics and your leverage in a safe way, that's the move, that's the direction that you go. In this particular rep range, it's better to feel the muscle. And if it's if I'm lifting in a way that where I can't feel the muscle, lighten the weight up, change my technique a little bit. Now I can feel. It I'm so glad muscle. you said that because that's another thing that so we talked about tempo and the mistake that people stay in a, in a, a rep range when they move out of it they make. That's the other thing that they 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 make a mistake. Yes, is not changing that. You have to change that when you go into the other phase. Also. Oh yeah, I mean if I'm benching to you know three reps, uh, I'm not trying to feel my chest. I'm trying to maximize the leverage. When I'm training for 10 reps, I, if I don't feel the chest, uh, I'll lighten the load and change my technique a little bit um, so I can feel the chest. But the tendency that a power lifter guy has who now finally you convince him to move into a body totally. phase, he wants to still lift the most weight that he can. Yes. Six to 12 rep range. And that's no longer the desired outcome anymore. No. I would rather see you reduce the weight by 20, 30% and slow down the tempo even more and focus more on the squeeze and all the things that we're yes. talking about. But it's a, the mindset yeah. that's hard to get it's out of that. It's an ego uh, it issue. Is. I mean, right away, like you have to really kind of let that go and realize the intent is is a completely different focus. Well, I so again, I was the bodybuilder guy going powerlifting. So I even had that hard time too. I was so focused on muscle guy and tempo and totally. feeling everything 
that I I had a hard time actually letting go of mm -hmm. that and being like, I want to just move as much right. weight as I can right now in this phase. You ever watch a bodybuilder yeah. go to deadlifting? Yeah, yes. no, yeah, and yeah. it becomes like a weird so flexed elbow. Yes. You know, and they're trying to really pull. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. and like, no. It's like they're doing like, like, it's like yeah. a row deadlift, and you could tell, yeah. oh, that's you not need to anchor this and get your whole body stiff. Totally. Yeah, and move quickly. Or see a power lifter go to bodybuilding. It's yeah. like, no, 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 no. You, you, I know you're doing a rear fly, but th that looks more like a row. Like yeah. elbows out, feel this muscle work, limit this particular range of motion, increase this range of motion. Yeah. Total different mindset. That's why totally. it's so, so important. Now, what does this feel like? Bodybuilding or body sculpting? What do I mean by that? When I'm training this way, what I'm trying to do <laughs> is I'm trying to think of my body rather than with the lower rep range where I'm trying to think of my body as one unit that's generating strength. Here, I'm trying to think of the different components of that unit. How can I sculpt and shape my body like a sculptor? So when I go in there and I think I want more upper chest, I want more rear delt, I want this part of my quad or this part of my glute, as silly as some of this sounds, and I know some of it's almost in futility, doesn't matter, makes a big difference. I'm going and I'm sculpting and shaping my body. In fact, I like to use the pump as a way to do this. How can I make my body look the way I want with the way that I target my pump in the gym, it really, you really do feel like you're sculpting your body. No, you absolutely, I mean, you could take a movement, okay, that the average person would look at, like, let's say like a seated cable row. And because a seated cable row is so unique, the back muscle is so big and there's so many different muscles in your back, I can literally, and if you had like this, yeah. if you had a machine like hooked up to all my muscles in, in the posterior chain, I could do five different reps and I could light up different areas way more. Yeah. Upper back, mid back, yes. lats, you yes. know, uh, rear delts. Yes. Yeah, totally. So, and that's, and that is the difference when you're, when you're training like this is mm -hmm. I, when I'm doing this exercise, I'm now thinking about the muscles that I'm trying to develop. This is also where the, the tempo and the squeeze, this is why they have so much value, right? Mm -hmm. Of slowing down. Cause it's not, it's, it's easy for us to sit here and just say, Oh, do a seated row, but now do it thinking about your rear delts. Like the average person hears that and goes like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, or right. how do I do that? We'll slow down the tempo, you know, let's real, let's lighten the load up real light. Now what I want you to do is let the shoulders kind of roll forward. So you feel the stretch on your rear delt. Okay. Now you feel that now try and engage that and then squeeze at the end and think about that. Maybe I'm touching the rear delt so they can feel it. That all that's where all these techniques really come into play when you're training this way to try and learn how to activate all those different muscles. Totally. Now, this the, some of the pros of this are it's it's fun. Uh, there's a lot of variety when you train this way. You're looking for angles, different angles of hitting different muscle groups, right? Rather than you know just doing a press for overhead, you know, uh, an overhead press for delts. I'm doing <clears throat> a press, but then I'm like, do I do it behind the neck? Do I do it in front of my body? Here's the part of the shoulder I want to work. Let me try some laterals. What about with cables versus the dumbbells? Maybe do some rear flies so I can hit this part of my, my rear delt. Like it's a fun type of workout. There's a lot of variety. And the pump is amazing with this. It really is. I mean, you can really target a specific muscle training this way and maximize the pump you get in that workout. And there's a lot of value in that, especially if you have a lagging body part. If you have a body part that just doesn't seem to respond like other body parts, this is where you can target it and then start to feel it for the first time. And I'm going to tell you something right now. There's definitely muscle building effects to the pump, but I like the psychological benefits. When I take a client who's like, you know, I never, my shoulders just don't respond. And I can show them a pump in their shoulders. The psychological effect of feeling that muscle, you know, grow temporarily, seeing it in the mirror, that pays off big time. Yeah. And the person's motivation, uh, consistency, and just how they, how they train that body part. Now, some of the cons, your strength gains are not going to be as prominent. So if you're like strength focused, if you <laughs> love lifting more weight, oh, yeah. you got to get that out of your head uh, when you're training this way. Now, I could get stuck in that. I, I, I like both bodybuilding and strength training, but if I had to pick one, I'd pick the strength. Mm -hmm. And if I get stuck in a strength phase for too long, which I have a tendency to do, and I get into this type of training... It, I have to really work on the mental aspect of, okay, the weight doesn't matter anymore. Even though I know I, I you know, if I do it in my power well, style. I went years just doing strength training. And it was like, <laughs> I did not want to do any kind of hypertrophy training, anything over like, you know, five to, to six reps. And uh, man, but, but really the value of it was so substantial because to be able to connect to other muscles and, and have those to contribute back when I get into a strength phase again, 
uh, was tremendous. And so it's it's a completely different shift in, in mentality, uh, an ego check because the, the weight goes down substantially. Uh, but in terms of like the overall feel of my body and, and also, uh, you know, just muscles to help in again with stabilizing and contributing around the joints as well, um, you can address a lot of issues that you, you don't even... You don't even see a lot of times when you're in uh, a bi-loaded position where it's like uh, everything is is all about movement and I'm not highlighting the individual muscles uh, and, and not realizing they're not really contributing yeah. like they should. Yeah. The other the other con about this rep range is this is where most of the studies are done to prove, you know, this is the best for building muscle and hypertrophy. This is where people get stuck. Yeah. yeah. So you a lot of people get stuck in this range. A lot of people that want to build muscle have seen enough of these studies being touted that this is the best place to train for building muscle and that they're they're missing the rest of the story. They're missing the rest of the elephant. You know what I'm saying? All yeah. they're all they're reading right now is the trunk or the feet right now and don't realize there's way more to this puzzle than just that. And they get stuck in this phase for a very long time and they don't get the benefits of the other yeah. ones and don't realize how much it contributes to their main goal. Of yeah, muscle. if you if you did a study, and they don't really do studies like this, but if you did a study that followed someone, not for 12 weeks or 16 weeks, but for a, a year, year or two years, two years yeah. and you compared people who did just 10, you know, eight to 10 reps, right? Versus people that went through different phases of, de of all of these reps. What you would find is the person that trained for four weeks in a rep range and four weeks in another one, whatever, over time got better, more consistent results in both strength and in muscle. Now, if you just do head-to-head -head short study, yes, some will build a little more muscle, some build a little more stamina, some build a little bit more uh, more strength. But over time, they all contribute. And it's and you always and look anybody who's ever done this knows this. You stay in one thing for six to eight weeks, you switch over. It's like boom, my body's responding again. Oh my god, this is amazing. And that's the beauty. That's the thing you want to take advantage of. Um, now, there's a myth with this rep range, and that is that. And you touched on this. It's the only rep range that builds muscle. That's completely false, 100% false. Thankfully, we have studies now that totally prove this. Uh, studies will show they all build muscle, so it's not the only one that builds muscle. The other ones don't burn more body fat or build, you know, bulky looking <coughs> bodies. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, next, let's get to the high rep ranges, 15 to 20. Now, I, I do want to say that you can have the low rep range mindset into the bodybuilding one or into this one right here and vice versa. You can do that. And I, I mean, is there value to it? I don't know. Maybe we're trying to explain the best way to utilize these rep ranges and this 15 to 20. And yes, there's, there's value in going higher than 20 reps, but we stopped at 20 because at some point it just starts to become endurance it's just training. Cardio. It's, it's no longer strength training. Yes. And, and you know, some people can get up to 30 reps and keep it strength training. Um, so, you know, again, this isn't uh, an exact science here, but 15 to 20 is a good range here for what we're talking about. This is an endurance, stamina, you know, type of mindset. Like your goal when you're doing 20 reps of squats versus two reps of squats. Like if I do two reps of squats, I'm like maximizing tension, staying tight, holding my breath, you know, focused and drive. When I'm doing 20 reps of squats, I'm like, I need to endure. Yeah. Like I need to yeah. make it through this set. I'm going to stay focused on keeping my breathing going Keep your composure. Yeah. If I do all, if I do all the first 10 reps, like I, a power lifter, I'm screwed, right? I'm not going to make it through this whole thing. Yep. So it's a, it's a kind of a consistent, smooth, enduring type of, uh, of mindset when you're doing reps. Yeah, you want to conserve energy a bit or be efficient with your energy management. Yes. Uh, and to be able to maintain, uh, good posture and, and good mechanics is, is paramount, uh, in this phase. Uh, which is something that is not promoted enough. Uh, it, it's really about how many you can do and how quickly you can get it done and, you know, what you can literally endure, but uh, they'd still need to be, uh, there still needs to be a high focus on quality. Yes. Well, you, this is one of the rep, you have to go really light, especially at first. Like if you don't train this way and you're used to being a strength Dude, trainer. you're going to 20 reps. The first 10 reps are easy and people are like, oh, I can add weight. Yeah. No, dude. I, every, every time I move into this phase, because this is probably a phase I stay in the least because it's the least favorite of mine, especially when you start pushing 20 reps. Like I, I, I frequently am training 15 reps, but uh, rarely do I push 20. But when I do, I always know that whatever weight I think I can move, I always got to go lower than that because- <laughs> When you never, when you rarely train in that, this to the stamina point, like you're, you end up gassing before you, and it's not a lot of times it's your, your cardiovascular endurance. 
You know, it's like a lot of times it's just my my heart. My heart's pounding so mm-hmm. fast from doing 16, 17, 18 reps that I'm having a hard time recovering there in order to even be able to lift the weight. But at, that's also what makes this such a great contributor to the other phases. Like you get mm-hmm. really good. You do, you can get, 20 rep squats down and go through a phase of 20 yeah. rep squats. Yeah. And then you go back to like 10, like, oh my God, 10 feels like nothing. And you can generate your force. With yes. You feel good. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah. Fatigue in those other settings is the killer of uh, your progress. And so to address that in this phase makes you stronger going back in to where that's not as much of a factor. So funny. I used to train this couple, right? Husband and wife, and they both worked out and the husband loved you know, six to eight reps. And the wife loved 15 to 20, 25 reps, right? This is how they trained before they met me and they used to work out separately. Well, then I worked out with them together. You flipped them. When we would do <laughs> low rep workouts, the wife was terrified. Oh, I don't like lifting this heavy. I feel like I'm going to hurt myself. When we go to the high reps, the, the, the husband was terrified. <laughs> I hate this. Makes me feel like I want to throw up. I want to die. It's so hard or whatever. So it was really funny. It's so stereotypical, but true, man. It was like, so, so funny. Like yeah, this. this rep range terrifies me because it just, if I do a set of 20 reps in the squat, if I my intensity is too high with this or if my weight is too high with this, one set and I'm done. <clears throat> like the workout's over. I'm not going to yeah. be able to move uh, or do anything <laughs> else anymore. So you have to be very smart with this uh, type of rep range. You have to have the right mindset and know that the second and third set are going to be way harder than the first. So if you did the first set and you're like, wow, that was hard. You know, I'm kind of breathing hard. Uh, you wait till the second and third set. Cause that muscle stamina, that strength stamina yeah. is a whole uh, different monster. Now, what does this feel like? It feels like conditioning. It feels like the burn. Feels like you sweat. This Feels is like a, cardio. Yes, 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 yes. This is why I love to make the case though for the the people that you know give us a hard time because we're we 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 rail on so many people that love to just run, 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 and then they try and attach that to the benefits of cardio. I'm like, if you ain't never done 20, 20 rep squats before, and if you don't think that gives you great cardio endurance, you're tripping because twenty rep squats for multiple sets is I, I would all day long. You do that, that's and you, a marathon. In yeah, itself. and you never and you never run. I bet you can get on there and run a mile really, really well. <laughs> I'm serious. Like you could the amount of time it takes to run a mile. You're talking about you know anywhere from six to ten minutes for most people. Like your set of squats is going to take you that long to get through twenty rep squats for three or four sets. And if you can do that with something on your back, like then go run a mile. I bet you could run a mile. No problem. That's, oh, yeah. how, that's no. how powerful that is. Yeah, the condi- this is this is the the like the stereotypical, um, you know what people think a workout supposed to feel like. When you can take the average person and you say, "What is a good workout yeah. supposed to feel like?" Burn and you sweat and you yeah. breathe hard. This Pump. is the rep range that you feel. Well, this is what like. has been sold forever in every DVD series and infomercial and you know. And then again to the earlier point where you're talking about what what a game changer it was for female clients to go in the low rep range. Uh, I mean, this is just what was promoted for so long that like, let's not get you big and bulky with the big weights uh, yeah. and let's st- stick Dude, with this rep I, range in, in small weights. I'll tell you guys a personal story. So, uh, you know, I can get, I can, and we all have our tendency, right? I can get stuck in the low rep ranges and I love the strength feel and all that stuff. And I love lower, especially lower body, low rep stuff, mainly because I like the feeling of lifting something heavy off my back. And also because I hate the feeling of high rep, lower body stuff. It just, it's just, like I said, it's just, I, I, I dread it. Right. So I was doing, you know, sets of five reps with, you know, this was recent. This was like over the last year. I'm doing like 375, you know, I even did it at some point. I got up to 405 for five, which was a lot for me, right? And I'm doing this and I'm like, you know what? I'm starting to feel my joints a little bit. I've been staying in this for a little too long. I'm starting to need to, you know, put knee wraps on. I better follow my own advice. Let me go and try some 20 rep squats. I went down to 225. <laughs> And I did one set. The next set, I went down to 185. Yeah. And that was it. And you know what happened? My legs grew. Yeah. My legs grew. They got bigger. They got, and, and, and I stuck to that for, I think it was like three or four weeks. Mm-hmm. And then for fun, I went, let me go see what I, what the 405 feels like on my back. I felt stronger and more stable. And I did, I think another rep or two uh, with that weight. So even, and I remember when we had Stan Efferding on the show years ago, he talked about how he trained in this rep range when he went from powerlifting to bodybuilding and he built all this <laughs> extra muscle. Do you think if you're a strength athlete, you could benefit from all the extra muscle? Absolutely. So not saying a power lifter should always train in this rep range, but if you neglect it, you're missing out on some of those incredible benefits that you can get from it because of the novelty. Well, if you're listening to this, right, and you either follow your own program or just follow your own, do your own thing, right? And 
everybody has a tendency, even us in this room, right? So we have all this information and knowledge and we, we've sit here, but each one of us has a tendency to gravitate to a rep range, yeah. right? If you were to, if we had to ask everybody honestly, okay, in the last two years, what rep range did you grab? We'd all have a rep range. We wouldn't say, oh, I have evenly split it no. between these. It's just, it's just the truth, right? So you have to ask yourself, who are you? You know, which one of these? And then the the people that I think sees huge benefits are the ones that migrate that migrate to the top or the bottom of this list because then you can go the opposite and it'll just blow your mind. Yeah. If you're someone who always is like one to five because you want to be a power lifter so bad or an Olympic lifter and you identify with that group so much, and maybe every once in a while you flirt with six to ten, but you never do no twenty rep anything. Like go do twenty rep exercises and see what happens. Now so, I like to recommend people mm -hmm. do a step ladder of it, not <laughs> because it's not better, because what you said I think is amazing, but because it's shocking and they don't fully grasp the change in weight. They just don't. You go from you're always doing four reps, you go to twenty reps, you will miscalculate how much weight <laughs> yeah. needs to be on the bar, and it will mess with your head. You're used to squatting four plates, you go down to one and a half plates on there. You know, you're looking around. Anybody watching me in the gym? Nobody's in here. Cool. I'm going to lift this weight because I normally lift so much more. So I typically have people do a step ladder for the psychological effects, myself uh, included. Um, some of the pros of this, you build incredible stamina and work capacity. Like you do five or six weeks of 15 to 20 reps. Yeah. You find yourself having this incredible stamina in your workout. After about the third or fourth week, you feel like you have this, this engine that just yeah. runs forever and you go through the workout and you just feel unstoppable and you don't need to rest long and everything feels great. You get an incredible pump from this, just like you do from the bodybuilding phase. Um, <clears throat> uh, although I will say the bodybuilding phase, I actually get a better pump that lasts longer with this. As the stamina builds, the pump starts to fade a little bit, but the stamina continues to grow up. But nonetheless, this is still, I would consider a great pump. That's uh, actually reference. interesting and a very good point. That's such a good point that you just made right mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. Because that, you, you, you notice that too? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. It be, well, it becomes closer and closer to more a stamina building thing than it is a, like a muscle pumping or building mm -hmm. thing. So that's a really good point. The first time you do it, you'll get a massive pump. Like if you've never done 20 rep squats, yeah. your legs will be pumped more than you've ever felt them before. Keep doing it though. It just becomes a stamina. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. eventually you, you condition yourself, the stamina builds, yep. and then now you're moving a weight that's relatively light for those muscles. And so they just don't pump as much. Totally. That's why I would say this is not the best pump one, but at first it is. At first, it's like the pump is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, some of the cons, you're not going to lift as much weight. Now, some people don't care about that. Some people do. It's definitely an ego check. It is for me, even now, after I've been training so many years, putting a light weight on the bar for me, doing all these reps, there's always, I always got to check my ego and be like, all right, you know, we're going to do 20 reps, Al, so mm -hmm. 10 pounds on the bar or whatever. It's all good. Now you list that as a con, and I would also make the case for it as as a pro because this is a, a case, and I've I've had these clients. I trained obviously less male than I did female, but the males that I train that love to move the weight all the time, like one of the best things for their body would be to just dramatically reduce the weight mm -hmm. and work on technique. Yeah, you're right. And, and so there's a lot of there's a lot of pros to li lifting a lot lighter weight, especially for my men out there that are listening that ego lift a lot, that yeah, love right. to push the weight as much as possible and love to do all the wraps and the wrist stuff and everything like that because they've got <laughs> achy joints, achy neck, achy shoulders, achy knees, and it's because they just they want to move weight all the time. It's like one of the best things that client can do is move into this really high rep range and start moving much lighter weight. Yeah, another con, um, and it, maybe someone likes this, I don't, it's exhausting. Like, this is the <laughs> kind of workout where I'm just like, as I'm going through it, I'm like, man, I need to like, I'm, 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 I'm pushing myself through this workout. This is not like I'm feeling the pump and then resting in between sets. And you know, this is great. It's like, this is more endurance than I tend to like. It's a lot more <laughs> mentally taxing. Yes. I would say it just, just because you, you have to <laughs> endure, you have to stay in that same mindset for a pretty long period of time versus, you know, being able to um, get in that one to, to five rep range where you're, you're just super focused and then it's over. Yes. You know? So yep. it's a totally different mindset. Totally. Now, myth around this, it burns the most body fat. It doesn't burn the most body fat. Yes, it does burn more calories, but again, that's inconsequential. It's not a huge difference in calorie burn. And remember, we've talked about this many times, the fat burning benefits of strength training has nothing to do with the calories you burn while you work. I don't want to say nothing. It has very little to do with the calories you burn while you work out. It has much more, much more to do with the muscle building effects and then what that does for your body. So if this rep range builds the most muscle for you, then it will be the most, the best fat burning rep range. If one to five builds the most muscle for you, that's the best fat burning rep range. If six to 12 builds the most muscle for you, 
that's the best rep range for you. So consider that with all of these. Don't worry about the calories burned during the workout. That really only lasts for a very short period of time. It's okay, which rep range for me is going to build the most muscle? That's the best fat burning rep range. And for most people, unless you're a specific type of athlete, you want to look your best. You want to have continual, consistent progress. The idea is to spend between three to six weeks in each of these rep ranges and then move to the next one. And if you do that all year long, you'll get more consistent results, less injuries. You'll feel better. You'll be more well-rounded with your fitness than you would be had you stuck uh, in just one rep range. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. You can find Adam on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal.com. 